Welcome, welcome, welcome Lake Pro Kids. Welcome, welcome, welcome Lake Pro Kids. Welcome, welcome, welcome Lake Pro Kids. Welcome, hello, we're glad you're here. Lastly, come join me. I'd love to. Here we go. And I'm Mark. And we're from Lake Grove Kids, the children's ministry program at Lake Grove Presbyterian Church. And we're so delighted you're with us this morning. And I have to bend down to show you something that I brought from my garden. Uh, this big rock. And I brought this rock today because often God is referred to in the Bible as the rock. Someone that we can stand firmly on. And even though that we might be shaky and falling off and unsteady, that rock below us never changes. So today in our call to worship, we're going to use that image of God being the rock that we can depend on when things are not really very dependable. So the call to worship response is, praise be to my rock. And the sign is like you take two fists and you put them together. So try it with me. Praise, Praise be to my rock. You got it. The call to worship. The Lord protects me. Praise be to my rock. The Lord rescues me. Praise be to my rock. The Lord hears me. Praise be to my rock. The Lord strengthens me. Praise be to my rock. And we have a worship song that we'd like to continue with that uses that same image that God is the rock of our salvation. Mm -hmm. Mark, will you teach it to us? Mm -hmm. I'll sing the first phrase and then I'll invite you to sing it with me. It goes like this. Oh, magnify the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. You see that? Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Good. We do that twice, and okay. then it goes on like this. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Sing that with me. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Good, let's take it from the top. Okay. We're going to sing, Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Here we go together. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. That part again. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he have all the boys sing the first phrase. Okay. And then when that same phrase repeats, we'll have all the girls sing that okay. one. Okay, so boys, are you ready? Here we go. We're going to sing, Oh, Magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. The girls now. Blessed be the rock of my salvation, Hosanna, 
good. Thank you so much for joining <coughs> with us in worship. Mark, would you help me with something? Mm -hmm. Now, whenever I pause, would you hold up a word that mm -hmm. fits in that blank? Yes. Are we ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay. That is just an accident waiting to happen. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. You are waiting in the wings. We don't want to keep somebody waiting. I didn't get in, so I'm on the waiting list. This is the moment I've been waiting for. We are wait, oops, we are waiting for our ships to come in. I'm waiting on you hand and foot. What are we waiting for? That is worth waiting for. Thanks so much, Mark. Mm -hmm. Okay, waiting. 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 It seems like we've been doing a lot of that lately. Waiting to go back to school. Waiting to go back to work. Waiting to hang out with our friends. Waiting to start baseball in the spring. Waiting to go to piano lessons. Waiting to see someone else besides the people that we see in our house every single day day waiting and waiting and waiting is just what our story is about in the children's bible in 365 stories we have been reading this week about the hero david and his time of waiting remembering David, who was that solitary sheep herder, taking care of his father's flocks when he was eight, nine, ten, just about your age. Or that hero that felled the giant, that nine-foot Philistine named Goliath, with just one single stone. That hero that was anointed and told he was going to be king when he was only 10 years old. And then he waited and waited and waited until he was crowned king. But before we look to see what is happening in this week's reading, let's go back and think about David as a child and that sheep herder when he was just about your age and see what he experienced when he was in a child that prepared him for his years of waiting later on. Now a sheep herder is usually the youngest boy in a family and that's exactly who David was. And a sheep herder spent lots of time outdoors. And a sheep herder's job was to protect the family's sheep and goats from anything that could harm him. Wild animals, getting lost, getting stuck in a crag or a ravine. The sheep herder often named all his sheep and called them by name. And every night would count all of the sheep in the flock to make sure they were all there. The sheep herder would sometimes gather the sheep into a cave at night to protect them from the rain or from the wild animals. Sheep herders would carry all their belongings with them wherever they went. Their food, which was sometimes bread and cheese and olives and dried fruit. They'd carry a large stick and a knife and a big leather pouch for gathering water, and a sling to shoot those rocks at anything that might harm their sheep. 
and sometimes they even carried a reed pipe or a harp to make music to amuse themselves as they were alone in the fields and that would also soothe the sheep. Remember what David said to King Saul in last week's story? How he reminded King Saul that he had rescued his sheep from the mouths of a bear or a lion? And that he could certainly slay Goliath because of that? But remember when he was saying what he had done with those wild animals. He wasn't even a teenager yet. Wow. Another thing that we learn about David is that he was musical. And in the times that he came to the palace of King Saul after Goliath's death, he was always often called in to play music to King Saul when King Saul was when, was when he was in one of his very black, bad, bad moods. So today we pick up the story after it's become too dangerous for David to continue living in the palace because Saul is becoming very jealous of David and what he does as a soldier in King Saul's army. And David's best friend in the palace was Jonathan, King Saul's son. But even being the friend of Jonathan, didn't protect David. So David had to slip away from the palace so he would be safe. He didn't know where to go or where he would, what he would do. He just went into hiding and waited. And others joined him in his waiting. And the years went on. And now the time of waiting begins for David. He knew he would someday be crowned king, but didn't seem like it was very possible now. And so he begins to wait. Year after year, David waited and waited and waited. And year after year, King Saul pursued him, consumed by jealousy and wanting to harm David. So David hid and moved from one place to another and waited. And others joined him in his waiting. And the years went on. And as we lead this week's reading, David still isn't king and the waiting continues. It's been over 19 years since Samuel first anointed David and told him he would be king. And David is still waiting. So what are you and I doing in our waiting times? I thought Mark and I would show you some of the things that we've been doing while we've been waiting at home, quarantined and staying home and staying healthy. So one of the things that I've done while I've been home is finish this little baby hat for a friend of mine whose son had a baby last week. And I made a pot to grow a seed out of newspaper. Cool. What kind of seed is that? It's a morning glory. Oh, I love morning glories. It's going to be a big vine with blue flowers. Oh, I love those. And one of the things I've been doing is painting. Now you probably can't tell, this is supposed to be my backyard with a fence. And I can't decide if I like it or if it's done, but I really liked doing it. Marcus, there's been something else you've been doing? I've been baking bread. Ooh, I've been eating it. This is sourdough made with wild yeast. And it's really delicious. Well, he's not the only one baking. I have been spending some time baking cookies, oatmeal cookies, which I think we can enjoy when we're done today. But besides baking cookies and baking bread, one of the things that Mark have, and I have been doing that's new for us is we've been reading 
the children's Bible in 365 stories together. Out loud, something we've never done before. And the other thing we've been doing is we've started a prayer journal and we write down people's names in the journal that we're gonna pray for. People we know, some people we don't even know, some people that our friends tell us about that they know that needs prayers. So that's something that we've started that's new. And this time of waiting has made us more dependent on God. It's using that time for us to change our hearts so maybe we're more in step with God's heart. And I think that might be what the time of waiting was for David as well. I imagine him in all those years of waiting, talking about God, talking to God, listening to God. Writing songs about God. Writing songs about God. Because many of the songs in the Old Testament are written by David. And he endured lots of hardships in his 13 years of trying to escape King Saul and King Saul's wrath. And in all those years of waiting, God turned again, David turned again and again towards God. So listen to some words from a song that David wrote, looking back on his life. And that's found in 2 Samuel 22. It's a song that looked back a lot on his time of waiting. And in this song, God says this. David says this about God. The Lord is my rock, my castle, my rescuer. God is my rock in whom I seek refuge. So I think the question for you and me and Mark and me is how are we going to use this time of waiting? We do have to spend some time going to school and going to work, but in the other hours of the day, how are we going to use the waiting time? Maybe you and I, Mark and me, can draw closer to God like David did. So at the end of our lives or the end of this time, we can look back and see how God sustained us in this time of waiting and waiting and waiting. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we are so tired of waiting and we are impatient. Help each of us use this time to learn more about you so we can say like David, you are the rock under our feet, whatever happens. In your son's name, amen. And speaking of waiting, I want to show you something from last week. Remember last week when I told you about the potato that I was going to try to grow into a plant and reuse it? Can you see how slowly it's growing, those two little teeny roots? I think it is going to take a lot of time for that plant to grow. And I am going to spend a lot of time waiting for a plant to emerge. We'd love to know how you're spending your time waiting. So let us know by dropping us an email at kids at lakegroveprez.org. We'll see you next week. So long, farewell, goodbye, Lake Grove kids. So long, farewell, goodbye, Lake Grove kids. So long, farewell, goodbye, Lake Grove kids. So long, farewell, see you soon. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you next week. So long, farewell. Goodbye, Lake Grove kids. So long, farewell.